Now, maybe I'm at that point in time, place, stage, age of life where I'm just really, really cynical about things and I've become what I dreaded becoming. Somebody that's very set in their ways, very much not open to the possibility of something being different than what my initial perceptions or thoughts are. And maybe that's true. And as much as I would like to pretend that that's not the case, there's probably a lot of truth to that. But when it comes to professional wrestling, and specifically the WWE, all of that is incredibly well-founded. Why would you give this company the benefit of the doubt when it comes to anything creatively? Why would you extend this company a courtesy that they haven't earned, merited, deserved for years? Why would you do that? Like what possible justification could you have other than trying to justify why you continue to watch the product? Why you continue to be a wrestling fan? I don't really know. But you know the trend and pattern here that time after time after time, even if they stumble into something that is a good idea. Give them long enough and they eventually will find a way to screw it the hell up. And you've especially seen this play out time after time after time after time over the past decade. So you have to forgive me here if I'm going to call it like I see it already with this stupid retribution faction. Retribution. Retribution. Retribution for what? Now look, we look at things like sports and maybe entertainment as a way to escape the doldrums of our everyday current realities. I get that. And certainly appreciate that. But there's also something to be said about if you want your entertainment product to really resonate and connect with folks, go with something that they are familiar with. Go with something that they know Go with something that they can understand. Go with something that can evoke some type of emotional investment, either one side or the other. So when you see something like this, you say, okay, all of the protest against police brutality, all the rioting that you're seeing, like here is an opportunity and a chance for WWE to latch onto that and have a chance to tell some interesting, compelling type of story that is relevant, that feels real, that is tied to what is currently going on, like it makes sense to do that. But as soon as you start hearing about this faction, this group that they're going to do, well, they're not going to be political, it's not going to be a political thing, then why the hell would you do it? You can't sit there and rip it straight from the headlines, law and order style, and then not actually mimic what the hell is going on. That's ridiculous and stupid. Now, granted, I have exactly zero trust in Vincent K. McMahon with his far-right Trump conservative leanings to be able to tell a well-positioned, nuanced type of story around riots, around police brutality, around destruction, and how it's stupid and it changes the whole narrative and nothing ultimately happens, which, by the way, is what happens every single time because people in this country are idiots. Conservative and liberal does not matter. You're all morons. The fact of the matter remains is even if Vince was to go political, he would have... No way to govern himself. He would have no way to check himself. And he would eventually lean into this kind of Fox News type of storytelling that would just be crap. Same type of thing if AEW was doing this and they put a more like left MSNBC liberal type of slant on this. It would also be crap. But, the, but there is at least still a chance of if you were going to try and rip off something and blatantly rip off something, which is exactly what you're doing. And that is okay, by the way. That is okay then you need to actually blatantly rip it off. And do it in a way that grabs people's attention. It grabs people's attention in the right way. 
And the way to not do that is have a bunch of Keebler elves run out on SmackDown on Friday night, walk around with bats, a whole whopping five of them, and sit there and chainsaw the ropes or whatever the hell else they did. That's stupid. And you shouldn't be surprised when the fans are reacting on Twitter that they're talking about how much they look like freaking munchkins. Like, when you get to the point that you've barely even done anything with this storyline and already, instead of emphasizing the destruction that happened or the chaos that happened or trying to tell some type of story with these guys, you got people looking at the obvious, which is, who are these bitches and why the hell should I care about them or what is there exactly that they're trying to get retribution for? Like, what is this supposed to be? Leo Rush and the freaking midget man? Seriously! What, maybe one of them I thought I saw some tatas? Okay, so at least you got a little diversity in the group. Like, if you're going to go with the Antifa type of crap, the freaking Raider type of crap, then you should definitely have way more than five of them. You should have way, 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 way more destruction than what you got. You know, and let's be realistic here. <laughs> a lot of the looters and the rioters look like me. So, you know, at that point, like doing the full scheme, I said, I'm not even doing that. Like, if you're doing that because you don't know who you have and want to have involved, then you at least should have had bigger people involved than what the hell you did. Like, this is just stupid. It's the same thing like on Monday night. They're sitting there and setting fire to crap and all this other stuff. Like, what's the point? And to those people that are going to sit there and say, well, you got to give it a chance. you got to let it play it off. Screw you! Why? What has this company done in the past decade to in any way, shape, or form earn that sheepish benefit of the doubt from you? If this was something that happened 20 plus years ago and you were talking about during the heights of the Monday Night Wars and the heights of the Attitude Era, or even to a lesser degree, the Ruthless Aggression Era, then you get that. I say, you know what? Let's give him a chance and let's see how this plays out. But you have seen this time after time after time after time after time after time after God bless and forget time. They don't know what the hell they're doing because Vince McMahon doesn't know what the hell he's doing because Vince McMahon is out of touch and he surrounds himself with a bunch of people that either A, are afraid to tell him where to go stick it where the sun don't shine when he's doing stupid crap or B, he positions himself with people that he's just going to overrule anyways even if they do have the courage to stand up and say, hey, you know what? You're a moron. Stop it. Look at the raw underground. The only good thing about that, realistically, was that it was over. The ending of it was the only good thing. But I'm supposed to give, and other people are supposed to give the benefit of the doubt. See how it plays out. What a type of lazy-ass, sheepish type of reaction that is. That's either flat-out fanboy sheep crap, or that's the, hey, I'm going to run counterculture. To, at least if you're going to run counterculture, at least do counterculture in a good way. You're not even doing that. You sound like a jackass. Now, if you're going to do this type of retribution thing, then it should overpower everything. Like, it should be the angle. It should be menacing. And even if you're saying, well, five people running around with bats and that, that, that. You know what? Like, if they were going to do this, they should have set fire to the ring. They should have been throwing Molotov cocktails or something to that effect. They should have been just reeking utter and complete, total chaos. You should have had security out there to represent the police and have the police tear gas them and then the protesters respond and then you could have the commentators talk about how the police were doing their job. It, the, the point being is, is if you're going to go down this path of ripping off something from the headlines, something that is real, that is happening daily, that we see, then you need to go all the way or not go there at all. And when you have gotten this far, even just one week-ish in, and you've got more people talking about the freaking size of the people as opposed to anything that's happened, you know you've already screwed up. It's done. And like at the end of the day, what, what is this going to be a platform for? Like who's really going to benefit from this? Like what, what's the end game here? How is this going to make a difference in anybody's career? 
Like you really think it's going to help anybody? Like seriously? I mean, I know I'm very negative right now and very jaded and very cynical. And I have every right to be. Like look at the company we are talking about. Look at the product we are talking about. And it seems like some people have actually liked SmackDown recently, so if that's the case, why the hell would you associate them with SmackDown, a brand that people actually seem to be kind of enjoying in any way, shape, or form? Isolate that carrot and keep it on Raw, at least. God knows that show needs something. When you, even, even for the folks that aren't like the, the size Nazis, if you will. When they're talking about these guys look like Smurfs and the Keeblerells and shrimp and midgets and everything else, and that's what stands out, like, it's over. You're not going to make this good. And it, it, it is like a, a 2020 version of the Shield. Is that what you're going for here? Like, at least the Shield had some element of cool factor. At least the shield had something where you could point to and you say, hey, these guys are probably going to be a part of the company's future for years to come. You could get behind that. You actually did some occasionally creative and good things with them. Like I look at this and it's been, we're running into the ring, swinging around with bats, taking, like, it's just stupid. If you're going to go there, then go there! And if you're not, then don't even bother. What you shouldn't bother with is expecting this to really pan out in anything good. What you shouldn't bother with is expecting this to go well. What you also shouldn't bother with is expecting me to give them the benefit of the doubt and see how this plays out. Why? Because they don't deserve it.